there everyone and a very happy Monday to you all. I do hope that you're having a great week so far and that you do have something nice planned for the week too. Hopefully you have some crafting time scheduled in your week which would be lovely. So we do have a new paint flower which was released and that's the one that we're going to look at today. Hello everyone that has popped in. Hello there Angel. Hey Stacey, I hope you're keeping nice and warm. Hi there, Anne and Sandra and Cece. I hope that you are all good. The lovely um, Roxy will be behind the badge today and she will be popping in all of the links. Also, if you do share this live stream, you are in with the chance of winning a $15 gift certificate to the Ulta New store that you can use on anything that you would wish from that. So hello there, Joan, Naomi and everyone else and thank you so much for sharing i will pop you guys down now so we can take a close look at the set and create a beautiful card with it so i do have my watercolors out today uh, and sorry it does take me a little while to kind of figure out these little buttons but i think we're good let me know if you want me to go a little bit um, close a hi there Nancy and Sue and Kelly and Barbara and everyone else that is there. So I'm just going to pull that in a little bit. So this is the very pretty Camellia Ward House and you can see that it is a sizable stamp on this one. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to stamp kind of the, um, along the top part of my image and then create a watery background. So that's the plan for today. So I have some watercolor cardstock. I also have my stamping tool. Um, it's not a Misty. It's um, from We Are Memory Keepers. I just find that it's easier for me to show um, techniques on this one instead of having to flip things over and then moving it over again. But yeah, that's just me. So what I'm going to do first is pop my watercolor cardstock in. I should, before I start, add some anti-static powder, AKA baby powder, because this helps when heat embossing. So it means that nothing, well, it's gonna help stop the embossing powder stick where you don't want it to. I also add it to my hands. Reason being, I am one to get mucky fingerprints anywhere, everywhere. So if I am heat embossing, adding a little bit of talc or baby powder to my fingers really does help me not leave things where I shouldn't. Okay, so I have the anti-static powder on my watercolor cardstock. The watercolor cardstock that I'm using is the one from Altenew. It's the one that's already cut down. So I think it's 20 A2 sheets and it is like perfect. This is my favorite watercolor. Now, I'm not sure if I'm gonna have this coming from the top or the bottom. So I'm just gonna stick it into place and then we can decide which looks best later on okay so i am going to be using some embossing ink and i am going to heat emboss this hello everyone that has popped in and i haven't said hello to thank you so much for being with us so i'm using my embossing ink now this is a like a sticky ink that helps the embossing powder stick to it. You can in fact use pigment ink as well as that will stay drier for longer but I would not recommend trying it with dye inks because they dry pretty quickly and you may kind of get like a splotchy effect with your heat embossing. To make it clearer and crisper as well I always kind of do heat embossing stamping twice oh no Naomi I hope that it figures itself out so you know that I'm quite rough when I'm <laughs> stamping my images so I'm gonna press that down do, do, do. and I am gonna do that again so I'm gonna try and make sure that it doesn't move and then I'm gonna oops ink that up again this is gonna doubly make sure that I've got everywhere hopefully 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 Oh, Kimberly, yep, my, that powder needs to go on my hands. <laughs> okay, 
All right. It also smells good too. Okay. So I have that stamped. It should be good and sticky. And I'm going to take a piece of scrap paper because you always want to kind of either filter your embossing powder back. And I find that scrap paper, paper works really well. You could use like a, a little tub if you wanted to, or you could also use a coffee filter. I've seen those used. I used to use them, but then I always forget to buy them, but scrap paper I always have. I am just gonna let my heat tool heat up a bit before I start going on my image. And I'm going to start behind. Once it starts going, I will then take it to the front. This is going to minimize the powder kind of spraying everywhere. Once it's started to take, it means that it's already started melting. So it won't technically move as much. I just think this is magical. This is one of the one of the um, techniques I wanted to try when I first started stamping, and I thought mm, I'm not going to be able to do that. But now it's one that gets done again and again. Thank you so much for sharing, everyone. Okay, so I have my beautifully heat embossed images. I know you can't really see them that well just yet, but you will do. So I am just going to make sure that's nice and cool before we start on the next one. I am going to get rid of my embossing powder because there's been plenty of times where I've just left it over to the side and then I forgot about it and it landed on the floor. That's not what I want. I'm going to move you guys in. And move that down. So, I have some my watercolor brush markers. I normally go for my 24 pan set, but I wanted to grab these out today because they're really luscious and have so much vibrancy on them. So I'm going to go with some purple flowers today. I know, not like me. So I'm going to do a mix. I've got purple wine, I have turquoise, and I also have the desert night. Okay. So I'm just going to splash this color on. So I'm not really worrying about going over the lines just yet because I'm gonna cut out this anyway and the lead. So if we need to go dark with the leaves, we need to go dark with the leaves. All I'm gonna do is I'm just going to take my mini mister, which is so cute. And I'm just going to spritz that. Hey, so how is that for watercoloring, but not really watercoloring? I maybe should have added some color to my leaves first. So I'm just going to wipe those leaves a little bit. Get some green. I'm going to just drop in some color. So this is the sweet leaf. Now, if you're worried about the marker taking the wet water, wet water, obviously water is wet, but the water and taking it back up the barrel, that won't happen. These do have a one-way valve on them, so they'll only let colour on out. They won't let anything back in, so you won't be able to contaminate them. Okay, so I'm just going to add some colour down onto my leaves. Doo -doo. Mm -mm -mm. I may need to kind of pull these colors out a little bit. And I know that my page is quite warped at the minute, but we should be good. I'm also going to add some darkness into those too. Ooh, okay. Mm -hmm. So this is the desert night. This is one of my faves. That's a petal, and they should be petals too. So let's make them into petals. Firstly, I'm going to kind of take out that watercolor 
on the leaves. Ah, oh, it makes me so happy. <laughs> it's just so pretty. Okay, and a brush. Any old brush will do. And I'm just going to pull that color out down. And I'm going to add some more of that pinky color in. I'm just squeezing the pen. The water will do the rest. Ooh, oops. And some more of that turquoise in. Now this is one that I would usually let dry by itself. So I'm gonna try that. And then if we need to heat set it a little bit later on, we can do that. I also want to add a little bit more darker center there. A bit more purple. This, these are lovely hydrangea colors. I love mixing purples and blues together. You get such variety. I'm just going to give that a spritz. Hey there, Avril. And thank you so much for sharing, everyone. And that will sort itself out, okay? It may look a mess at the minute, but it won't do. So what I should have done is pop that onto a palette. So I'm just going to lift that up so I can move that over somewhere. There we go. What you can do is just tidy up this. Or if you wanted to, if you had another sheet of paper, you could definitely, oh, another sheet of paper and a clean desk before you started, you would definitely be able to pick up this ink deal. My desk was not particularly clean. So that's why I didn't pick my ink up. All right. So let's go on to our background so we have those beautiful dark colors there what kind of colors should we put in the background hmm i'm thinking yellows or should i go grays please let me know before i start i can grab a gray out but i do have some orangey colors here I do love some yellow. Okay, yellow. Thank you, Anne. It's not just me that loves some yellow. Okay, so before I start on my background, I am going to add some spritz on that. Okay, so it's quite saturated at the top. It's got that lovely spritz effect. I'm going to add my, just an ink behind there. Sorry, that's my dishwasher. I love yellow. It's one of my favorites. And I'm just going to add some color to here. Now, even if I don't use this as my background, I'll still have a background to use. So this is the Sun Kiss. So these are all from the um, tropical, tropical Fiesta brush markers. I don't think I mentioned that, so I am sorry. Okay. So I added some Sun Kissed in, and now I'm going to go with that beautiful fresh lemon. Mm -hmm. I'm just going to drop that in. Okay. Mm -hmm. Oops, I had something on my finger. I'm just going to add a little bit of water just to the back, just so it straightens out a little bit. Ooh, everything's pretty. There we go. Let's take that color away. All right, that light and that light. Hopefully we can see it better now. Okay, so if you want these to go more straight, you can pull them out. I'm just using some water 
on my brush for this. It's kind of <laughs> looking like a tiger. <laughs> oh, let's not put any black on this because we don't. We, maybe we do want tiger print, but um, I don't think it would quite work with the flowers. Cordelia, welcome. I'm glad you could make it. So I do want to kind of break up that yellow there. So I'm just squirting some of that color in. Pull that out. You can spritz that out if you wanted to. I always say to myself, I'm not going to do something that really needs a lot of drying time. And then I find myself squirting things. Just going to kind of dab some of that away. That will create a lighter look. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And not as much drying time. I think with this kind of background as well, you've probably seen Aram do it. Um, you just need to let go. So don't worry too much about it. Just really play around. There we go. Okay, so hopefully that looks okay to you guys. I might take some of that out. Add some splotches. Maybe a bit more yellow. Everything's going pretty well. Okay. Okay. All right. So I'm going to leave that dry for a little minute. Just pop it on something where it's not going to drip. So has anyone else tried this full watercolor kind of technique where you don't actually color the image, you just scribble the color on and then squirt it and it does its own thing? Please let me know. So I'm gonna bring this in now and we are gonna attempt to dry it off a little. So I am going to use my heat tool. Yes, just regular watercolor paper. And I'm going to try and keep my heat tool quite far away so I don't move stuff around. Oh, Vicky, that would be so lovely. Oh, thank you, Avril. Yeah, I'm a little bit of a cheat when it comes to watercoloring. Okay, I'm just going to stop that in a little minute because I don't know if you can see, but we have this purple being a bit cheeky and trying to get onto our leaf. So all I'm gonna do is I'm gonna spin that around and say, stop being so cheeky and just kind of pull that color away. Although oh, that leaf looks really pretty now. <laughs> and you can just take some of that color away. If you wanted to, you could take some more green and add onto that, but I kind of like that purple leaf. Normally, I would let this dry naturally, so I would just leave it on a little um, palette and leave it in my by my window on my window shelf, and that would dry overnight. This isn't <laughs> normally a technique that you should try on a lot. Oh, Nancy, it should look like this. 
I'll pull on both of the both of the things. I am loving the fact that the one behind has a lot more pigment than the one in front. So it does kind of look like this one is behind that one. I'm actually wishing now that I'd added more color to my leaves. So they popped a little bit more. But if you wanted to, you could definitely add some more ink in at this stage, then spritz again. That's not something I'm going to do now because otherwise we'll be here forever. But you definitely, definitely could. Maybe I should like do one or the other. <laughs> thinking that's enough <laughs> of the heat tool so um, it looks so pretty I don't know whether or not to cut this out anymore but I'm going to I'm going to maybe we create another background because I'm thinking that yellow is going to be much too bright for this one but we can use that yellow one on a different project so all I'm going to do now is I'm just going to cut around my image I am leaving a little bit of a border but I don't think that's going to be too noticeable. Maybe I'm going to add a green border, a background. Oh, I don't know. That background was so pretty. Maybe I should have left it. We'll see if the yellow goes. If it doesn't, you can always do something else. It will not go to waste. around this part okay so we have our very pretty image I'm just gonna wipe 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 I'm thinking that this is going to be much too bright, especially with those muted tones that we've got. Oh, I don't know. What do you think? Do you think we should go for it or should we try something else? Oh, teal. Okay. Avril, let's go a bit of tealy, shall we? Let's do a quick one. Let's see if we can keep it quite quick. All right. Let's go desert night, all right? All along the top. Oh, that's my favorite. And some turquoise. Oh. <laughs> okay, I'm trying to keep this as dry as possible now. <laughs> okay. Oh, thank you, Cece. So I've just got some water now, and I'm just going to pull that down. I do want it kind of fading off a bit, so. <laughs> okay, very artistic. I feel very Aramish at the minute. So I have my very quick 
background. I tried to keep it as dry as I could so we could quickly heat that, that one. But it looks, looks cool. Yeah, I think this is going to work a bit better. So we did a bit of watercolour in, faux watercolouring where we scribbled the colour in. I'm going to take some of that colour away, maybe make it a bit more splotchy. We're doing mixed media now. Okay, so I've just got a little, my baby wipe, and I'm just kind of taking some of that colour out now. Hey, when I started, I didn't know I would be <laughs> doing this, but I'm, I'm kind of liking the mottled effect that that's going. It's kind of took away them harsh lines. So if you're not loving those harsh lines, just get yourself a baby wipe, and that will help you sort that out. Okay, another. Oh, again? Facebook is having troubles with us, I think. So we have that, and then we have our image from before. I think that's looking a bit better than the yellow. Okay, but I wanna add some more bits to it. Um, I think it was Wendy said that she uses pearlescent I just wanted to add some to the background. So this is the iridescent from Old to New. And I do want quite thick spudges of them. Maybe we add some to this. There we go. That'll be nice and shiny now. Okay. Quick one. <laughs> Yeah, so I really do like the iridescent spray. It's just so pretty and it just works with everything. So I haven't actually done that completely yet, but it has given me a really great mixed media-ish look, which I can't normally do. So I'm quite happy with that. So I'm going to add that to the background with some tape. Yep, sparkle, that's always the way forward. Tape, tape, tapity tape. So this isn't dry yet and that's not dry yet. So we're hoping these are gonna stick together. Cause that's the kind of world I live in. Just hope. Okay, oops, that's it, you stick there. Now, do we like the flowers coming from the top or the flowers coming from the bottom? Mm, not sure. Please decide as I find a sentiment that we can use this. Yes, I always live on the edge. <laughs> always. Ah, oh, and I found the perfect sentiment. <laughs> Top, coming from the top. All right. Okay, I did want to show that our yellow background looks very pretty. It just isn't correct for this card. Maybe some bright orange florals will go 
fantastic on that one. I do have this was You Was Made to Shine from the Sentiment Strips 3. So I'm just going to trim this. too all over oh pink flowers Anne. yes bright like fuchsia purpley pink i think that would look fantastic good call thanks Anne. okay let's, do, 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 do. let's just trim those oh landscape We could go landscape. Oh, see, this is just too hard to choose now. I think I'm going to go top, although I like it that way. Let's see what the sentiment looks like. So I got You Were Made to Shine because we did add that sparkle on the. I'm going to go that way. Okay. Landscape with the leaves on top. All right, that way, right? Got those leaves here, right? Hopefully I've got it the right way. I do really need to wash my hands. <laughs> I've got blue everywhere. Okay, yeah, there's just so many ways that this would work, which is fantastic. It means that you could create four of these cards with slightly different backgrounds because you're never going to be able to get um, backgrounds the same. But then you could like give them all different orientations as like a little gift set, and that would be really cute. I'm going to go with the sentiment here. I think that works. Maybe just to add a little bit extra interest, I'm just gonna get rid of that side and bring that down. That remember everything's still a little bit damp, so that these things are sticking together is fantastic. Okay, so there we go. There's my little card for today using the very pretty Camellia Ward House. Thank you for joining me on this adventure. And we know that it can be sometimes a little bit of a journey when you stop in with a live with me, you know. And I have to say, I don't think I hum today, which is amazing because that never happens. I always hum. And maybe I was humming when the heat tool was on. Maybe, 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 just maybe. So everyone, thank you so much for joining me. It has been a pleasure. Thank you so much for helping me out with what to do with my card. And, you know, some things you need someone else's opinion on. And sometimes it's you guys. So thank you for being there for me. Thank you to the lovely Roxy for popping in all of the links. And I will see you again very, very soon. I hope you have an amazing week and I'll see you again. Bye-bye.